Breaking news, we are learning new details in a critical incident in Juneau County that left one man dead. A breakdown of what we have learned so far. Stoughton police and Stoughton schools are investigating an incident involving a toy gun right near a school. But a mom we spoke with says the communication to parents was too little too late. And today is Gun Violence Awareness Day coming at a time when we're still grieving another school shooting. We'll show you how one parent who lost a child at Sandy Hook says you can make a difference. This is News 3 Now at 5. We are covering breaking news out of Juneau County. One person is dead, another critically injured in what the Attorney General is calling a targeted act. Police are still working the scene at a home just north of, New Liz uh, just north of Mauston. They've been there all day. The Attorney General just wrapped up a press conference about 15 minutes ago. And our Brady Mallory joins us now with what the AG could tell us so far, Brady. Well, tonight we know a 68-year-old homeowner from Juneau County is dead, and the person police think got into that man's house shot himself. That person is in critical condition. The AG says this started at about 6.30 a.m. A person who safely got out of the house called police and said two shots were fired inside the home. Police responded quickly. When the Juneau County SWAT team went inside, that's when they found the dead person and the wounded suspect. The uh, individual who's the suspect um, appears to have had other targets as well. It appears to be related to uh, the, the judicial system. Um, at this point, we are not aware of any evidence indicating that there is any active danger to other individuals. Those who may have other, uh, been other targets have been notified of that. The Department of Justice is not releasing the names of the victim and the suspect at this time. Call is stressing there is no threat to the general public and any potential additional targets are safe. Brady, thank you. You can follow along with the latest updates on the incident through our News 3 Now app and on channel3000.com. It's free to download in your app store. Let's get a look at your certified most accurate forecast now. Gary Canalti is on the weather patio. Gary? Well, Susan, it would be nice if the weather could stay like this for the weekend, but unfortunately it's going to change to almost the opposite of what we've seen over the last couple of days. Visible cloud track shows clear skies across Wisconsin, but there are some clouds starting to move in in western portions of Iowa where a few light showers have started to develop, and we'll see some showers off and on through the weekend across much of southern Wisconsin. Low temperatures this morning started out in the upper 40s to the lower 50s across the state. Uh, here in southern Wisconsin, high temperatures today so far in the middle 70s. Very nice day. A couple places were closer to 80 degrees and right now temperatures are mainly in the middle 70s, very close to the high temperatures for the day. By tomorrow morning, we'll drop off to about 49 degrees, but clear skies this evening will turn cloudy overnight. We'll start to see some showers, especially west of Madison by morning. And then tomorrow, cloudy and cooler, scattered showers off and on through the day. High temperature at 65. Sunday will be cool with showers as well, but as we head into next week, the rain chances will go down a little bit. I'll have more on that in the forecast in just a few minutes. All right, Gary, thank you. Do more or at least do something. That's how a Stoughton parent feels tonight. She says a former student terrorized her daughter and friends this week. Nicole Ayer claims a former Stoughton middle schooler shot at her daughter and several fr friends with a toy gun while wearing a ski mask this week. According to Ayer, it took place just off school grounds near River Bluff Middle School. Air says her daughter and four friends scattered, trying to avoid the gel pellets, all of them terrified. When they learned what happened, she went to the school and Stoughton police, but hadn't gotten solid answers when we spoke with her late this morning. No one's taking responsibility, really, is the way that I'm looking at it. If it's not happening on school grounds, then it's the police department's issue. And if the police department are saying that, well, he's part of the school district, and we're just butting heads. Well, then it's the parents' responsibility. No, as a community, it is all of our responsibility to keep the children safe. The Stoughton Area School District sent a note home to parents just after 3 o'clock this afternoon and sent us a copy in just the last hour. In it, it says, quote, the Stoughton Area School District is conducting investigations in collaboration with local law enforcement and that any disciplinary action will be in alignment with district policy. The interim district administrator also said safety and security of schools remains their number one priority. We posted their full statement on this story on channel3000.com. And tonight at 6, our Brad Hamilton will explain why that mom that we spoke with says this is a pattern of behavior 
fear from this child. Two women are recovering from gunshot wounds tonight after being shot during a funeral in Racine yesterday afternoon. Right now, no one's in custody. Police say multiple <coughs> guns were found at the funeral service. Police say a 19-year-old woman was treated and released from the hospital, and a 35-year-old woman was airlifted to a hospital but was awake and alert today. Family members say the funeral was for Deshante King Sr., who was shot and killed by a Racine police officer on May 20th. A 911 dispatcher in New York York was fired because of their inappropriate response after receiving a call for help during the Buffalo supermarket shooting. Last month, an assistant manager at the top supermarket called 911 after hearing shots. She whispered out of fear that the gunman might hear her, but officials say the dispatcher said they couldn't hear her, asked why she was whispering, and told the caller, quote, you don't have to whisper, they can't hear you. Shortly after that, the caller said the dispatcher hung up on her. That dispatcher was put on administrative leave and was fired yesterday. Momentum is growing in Washington, D.C., meanwhile, as calls for some kind of gun control measures continue. President Biden has called for a ban on high-capacity magazines, universal background checks, new safe storage laws, and red flag laws, plus a return to the assault weapons ban of 1994, which he helped pass as a senator. Now is the time for my Republican colleagues to put up or shut up. This needs to be done and must be done consistent with the Constitution. The House could vote on the proposals as early as next week, but they face steep odds in the Senate. Also next week, parents of the victims and young survivors in the Uvalde, Texas school shooting are scheduled to testify before the House. Today is Gun Violence Awareness Day, and we're hearing from one father who knows the agony from mass shootings firsthand. His son was killed in the attack at Sandy Hook Elementary School. Elise Preston shares his story and how he is helping others. You know, it's just everything's really raw right now. For Mark Barden, there's no escape from the horrors of gun violence. He describes the school shooting in Uvalde, Texas, as horrifically, starkly similar to what happened at Sandy Hook Elementary School. His seven-year-old son, Daniel, died there. I just miss my little boy. I just miss him. He was a light of sweetness and compassion. The father has channeled his pain into action, co-founding Sandy Hook Promise, which aims to protect children from violence. The nonprofit has trained 15 million school children across the country to recognize warning signs of someone who is isolated and in distress and get them help. What do you think compassionate Daniel would say about the work that you're doing. Oh, I know, I know he, he would be proud. And it's heartbreaking that, that his, his life was ended in the way it was, but Daniel would be proud of what we're doing because it's very much about how he lived his life. Barden says the group's efforts have prevented nine school shootings. I'm asking folks to take this rage and this hurt that you're feeling right now in the wake of what happened in, in Uvalde and other mass shootings, and don't let that fade with the news cycle. In the 10 years since Sandy Hook, 77 students have been killed in mass shootings, adding urgency to Barden's mission. Sadness and despair can, can quickly morph to rage, and then, um, and then that can quickly morph to hope, understanding that I have something that can prevent this. On the heels of tragedy in Buffalo, Uvalde, Tulsa, and more, communities across the nation are hearing Barden's call to action using this Gun Violence Awareness Day to raise their voices and demand change. Elise Preston, CBS News, Newtown, Connecticut. And Gun Violence Awareness Day began in Chicago in 2015 in honor of a teen who was killed by a stray bullet. The tribute includes wearing orange. That was her favorite color. Public Health Madison and Dane County is marking the day by hosting a walk tonight. The walk will be held at 6 o'clock, begin at the Villager parking lot on Park Street. It'll end at a rally at Penn Park. Speakers will share information about what's being done in Dane County to prevent gun violence. Walkers are encouraged to wear orange. An already contentious fight to win the Republican primary for governor in Wisconsin got even more so overnight. Donald Trump endorsed businessman Tim Michaels. Michaels just got into the race six weeks ago. Trump calls him an American first conservative. But how will this shake up the race? Political reporter Will Keneally sat down with an expert to find out. Will? That's right. 
So at one point we had a relatively clear front runner in the race, Scott Walker's former Lieutenant Governor Rebecca Clayfish. Now that narrative has flipped on its head with Michaels becoming the new front runner in the race. And I think his endorsement is going to have a major effect. Tim Michaels now has the momentum in the primary for governor after former President Donald Trump's endorsement. But UW lacrosse political science professor Anthony Tregoski says that doesn't guarantee a victory for Michaels. I don't think a Trump endorsement on its own is quite enough for a candidate in a Republican primary. He says a candidate has to capitalize on the endorsement to leverage it to persuade Trump faithful voters. If you have a candidate who can take advantage of all of those things, I think the endorsement really does matter. This was a blow to the rest of the field that was hoping for a Trump endorsement, perhaps most for Rebecca Clayfish, who didn't get the state's party endorsement but got more votes for it than any other candidate. In a statement released last night, Clayfish defended her path forward, saying that Trump likes winners and, quote, I'm the only person in this race who has won statewide, not once, but four times. I'm particularly interested in what Rebecca Clayfish does, because something isn't working for Rebecca Clayfish. He says Clayfish has failed to resonate with voters so far. So I think you might see some candidates adjusting their strategies. And with about two months left before the August primary, Trigoski says any course correction needs to happen soon. With the Trump endorsements, that comes along at a pretty key moment in this campaign as voters are starting to tune in, as they are starting to form their impressions of the candidates, as they are starting to decide who they're going to vote for in August. So that primary will be held August 9th and the winner will face incumbent Governor Tony Evers. Well, thank you. Happening this weekend only, the Wisconsin DNR is hosting its free fishing weekend. All Wisconsin waters are open to anyone without a fishing license. The DNR will still be enforcing size and bag limits statewide. Free fishing is only June 4th and 5th. You'll need to purchase a license to fish outside of those dates. Well, next at five, the weekend, the week ends with a few showers. <laughs> it is the weekend. Yes, it is. Thank goodness. Gary has the latest forecast. Plus, the Hometown Days Festival kicks off in Verona tonight. We'll share a preview when we come back. And later, gas prices continue to spike nationwide, how they're impacting summer travel coming up at six. Gas goes up, stocks go down. The Dow Industrial is losing 348 points. The NASDAQ off 304. The S&P 500 down 68 and we'll be right back. I don't think it's here for the burger. This summer, Prime Rib is the star. Bite into the new Primal Angus Thick Burger at Hardee's. See Jurassic World Dominion in theaters June 10th. Stop into Menards and get your outdoor projects completed with 11% off everything. Menards Premium Weed and Feed is a ready-to-use formula that provides your lawn with nutrients and controls weeds all in one application. Right now, only $9.99 after 11% rebate. Keep your backyard organized with our great selection of SunCast storage products. Save on everything for your home, including 11% off all SunCast storage products. Right now at Menards. Save big money at Menards. Senators couldn't tell you the cost of a gallon of milk. Thanks, Ruben. Or how much beef has gone up this year. But I'm not like most senators or any of the other millionaires running for Senate. My mom was a teacher and my dad worked third shift. I know how hard you work. And I know that by bringing manufacturing home, we create jobs and we lower costs. If we want to change Washington, we got to change the people we send there. I'm Mandela Barnes and I approve this message. Hy-Vee hot deals are super hot this Friday through Sunday. Gold Leaf Chicken Leg Quarters, only 49 cents a pound when you buy a 10-pound package. Our special recipe brats, 10 for only $10. Hy-Vee Purified Water, get a 40-pack of bottles, only $3.88. Hy-Vee Pasta, 5 for only $5. And Quilted Northern Bath Tissue or Brawny Paper Towels, only $5.99. Scan the QR code and check out hyveedeals.com for more deals. Those brave men and women of our armed forces, generations of them, why should today's burdens fall back onto them? They were there for us. Now let's be there for them. Your local Wisconsin energy providers and the Keep Wisconsin Warm Cool Fund are working together to deliver Wisconsin veterans in crisis heat, power, and help staying in their home. But they can't do it alone. Donate today. 
traffic is horrible. Great. Time for another one of these. Find into the new Primal Burrito or Biscuit with Prime Rib at Hardee's. See Jurassic World Dominion in theaters June 10th. It made me reconsider whether or not I could send her to school the next day. Parents of a local school are irate about the lack of communication of an incident involving a gel gun just off campus. We're looking for answers tonight at 6. News 3 Now, winner of 18 Awards of Excellence from the Wisconsin Broadcasters Association. We'll continue to strive for excellence every day to bring you the area's best local news coverage. News 3 Now. You're watching News 3 Now at 5. Well, happening now, the Hometown Days Festival kicks off in Verona. Like many other events affected by COVID, the festival returns to its regular celebration this first weekend of June. It features carnival rides, Optimus Burger Stand, and the traditional beer tent with live music. Hometown Days was canceled in 2020 and moved to the fall last year. The money raised helps local organizations. This year also marks the city's 175th anniversary. It's just really exciting to know that the community has been been here for so long and has remained active and vibrant and that the whole community is actually pulling together for Hometown Days. Fireworks will wrap up the first night of Hometown Days at 930 this evening and there's a big parade through downtown Verona Sunday at noon. We'll see another 1.3 million cans of baby formula on shelves soon after the FDA approved a new shipment from Mexico. The cans will be imported between July and October. It will help meet demand while we continue to see a national formula shortage. If you're looking for formula, the FDA says the cans will be sold at key retailers and on the Gerber website. It should be enough to make 33 million bottles. This summer Sunday is National Cancer Survivors Day, and this year advocates are hoping to spread the word about the resources available to those battling cancer. Astrid Martinez reports. 44-year-old Kamisha Williams is a breast cancer survivor diagnosed nearly six years ago. I felt alone. I felt lost. Uh, I did not know where to begin. Then she found resources at the American Cancer Society, including an 800 number for patients and the Reach to Recovery program, connecting breast cancer patients with trained volunteers who are also survivors. She suggested things like asking the doctor if it was okay if I could record our session so I could go back and replay so I could be reminded of what my treatment was like. There are nearly 17 million cancer survivors in the U.S., a number expected to increase to 22 million in the coming years due to our aging population and advances in early detection and treatment. We've had a 32% mortality decline since 1991, and those cancer survivors have specialized needs post-treatment. Dr. Karen Knudsen is CEO of the American Cancer Society. She says research for survivors is critical. The importance of not just bringing someone to the point where they are five years beyond their last therapy, but enhancing their quality of life at that time. The goal is to ide identify what is the personalized health plan for that individual moving forward. Kamisha is now a Reach to Recovery volunteer. You're paying it forward being part of this program. <laughs> I am. Even before my treatment, this was something that I knew that I wanted to do. I wanted to be the type of support that I had. Because every survivor should have that support for their fight. Astrid Martinez, CBS News. Well, after a sunny day, we're looking at some rain chances this weekend. Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti has your certified most accurate forecast. Gary? Mark, just the opposite of what happened last weekend. We had rain before the, the Memorial Day weekend, then it was dry pretty much for most of the Memorial Day weekend, then we had some rain chances after it. Now, uh, this weekend is going to be just the opposite. Tropics are heating up. Continue to watch an area of uh, development that could become a tropical depression. Still has not reached that stage yet, but you can see a lot of rain moving northward from Cuba over the Florida Keys and through
through much of the southern half of Florida. Tropical storm warnings in effect for the Keys all the way up through uh, much of central Florida and into the eastern portion of the state. The system has not been named yet. It's still not even a tropical uh, depression and it would have to increase its maximum sustained winds to almost 40 miles an hour before it gets named and that would be uh, Tropical Storm Alex if it does reach that uh, uh, threshold. Around here, we have rain in the forecast, not as much as they're having in Florida, but three things you need to know in the forecast. Look for off and on showers for tomorrow and Sunday. Not a complete all day rain, but keep an umbrella handy because you'll see rain at some point. Cool weather too. High temperatures only in the uh, middle 60s for Saturday and upper 60s for Sunday. And then as we head into next week, there'll be chances for showers, but there'll also be a couple of days where it'll be mainly dry and temperatures at least will be a couple degrees warmer, probably in the lower to middle 70s. But still, that's below normal. Average high temperature goes from 76 to 78 degrees and our temperatures are mainly in the low to mid 70s for most of next week. Doppler track right now, quiet across Wisconsin, but here come the showers already into parts of South Dakota and Nebraska. Those will be in here by late tonight, early tomorrow morning for our Western viewers and everybody else will see them during the day tomorrow. Temperatures right now show a contrast. 60s to the north, 80s to the south. The jet stream kind of right in between right now. And notice the dew point temperature is very low in the 30s across Wisconsin. So the air is dry here, but dew points are in the 50s to the south of this front and the jet stream right in between. So what we're going to see is with this weather pattern staying pretty static, and I've talked about this the last couple of nights, that it's just going to, so the overall pattern will stay the same. So we'll kind of see a front kind of set up in between little waves of low pressure running along it, and each wave of low pressure will bring a chance of showers. So this will be the overall trend for mo most of next week. We will be on the cool side of the front with winds mainly out of the north, northwest, or northeast, and that'll keep our temperatures below normal. Right now, temperatures mainly in the 60s across the state. Notice farther to the south on the other side of that front, temperatures closer to 80 into central Iowa and parts of northern Illinois. Future track shows the clouds moving in for tonight. Here come the showers, and you can see them. You know, not a continuous rain, but lots of clouds and some off and on shower chances through tomorrow night and into the day on Sunday. And then as we head from Sunday night into Monday, the last batch of showers should move on through, and we'll start to see some clearing perhaps late in the day on Monday, more likely for Tuesday, and that'll probably be our best chances for seeing dry weather for next week. Look for a high temperature tomorrow of 65 degrees. It'll be cloudy and cooler with some off and on shower chances. On future track, again, clear skies this evening, but here come the clouds overnight. The showers arrive by morning. We'll see them off and on through the day tomorrow. And not a continuous rain, but keep an umbrella handy, and it could rain hard for at least a little short period of time as the showers pass through, and that'll be the case right into Sunday. Rainfall amounts, you total it all up. We might end up with a half inch to an inch of rain through Monday morning, but again, not all of it at once. As we look at the 7 to 10 day forecast, notice uh, Tuesday should be dry, Wednesday some showers, perhaps an afternoon thunderstorm. Same thing for Friday, Thursday mainly dry. So you kind of get the, the, the trend here. Uh, some rain chances, but not an everyday rain and temperatures will turn a little warmer by the end of next weekend. As we check out first warrant traffic on a Friday, there's the view of the Beltline at uh, Seminole Highway. It looks like traffic's starting to pick up a little bit on the eastbound side. Still seeing some slowdowns from Monona Drive to just east of Verona Road where the traffic merges on there. Westbound, some delays looks like from around Seminole Highway to around Park Street right now. About a 25 minute trip on the eastbound Beltline from University Avenue to the interstate. 18 minutes going back in the westbound direction. The usual 25 minutes from an I-30 90 from the Beltline to Janesville, 17 minutes on US 12 Middleton to Sauk City, and 18 minutes from downtown to Sun Prairie on East Washington Avenue and US 151. That's your news for now. First one, traffic. All right, Gary, thank you. The job market and inflation continue to grow. A closer look at the numbers next at 5. News 3 Now First Warn Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. Your John Deere is here. Get yours during our Green Tag Sales event. Get your new full-size, mid-size, or HBX Gator with 0% for 36 months. Get a John Deere now and... Power up at Sloan's. Get your Gator running. Test drive one today at Sloan's. How much money have you wasted trying to find the right shade of foundation to match your skin tone? You end up with so many unused bottles, yet you can't bear to throw them out. Now, there's Color of Beauty self-adjusting foundation, which means you'll never search for the perfect shade again. It's really difficult for me to find a good tone foundation. I usually purchase about three or four and sometimes mix them. Color Beauty is a game changer.
changer and finding the right foundation. You put it on your skin and it transforms into your own skin tone. The Color Beauty Foundation is so simple to put on. My skin looks great and it just looks awesome. The key to the innovative Color Beauty formula is tiny color beads that release and blend to perfectly match your skin tone as you apply it. The foundation is white when it comes out of the bottle, but when I begin to apply it, it adjusts to blend perfectly with the color of my skin. My biggest problem area is my cheeks right here. Color Beauty feels really light on my skin, and I can tell that it is pretty full coverage, so it looks like I don't have too much foundation on, but it is covering all my acne scars like I was saying before. I actually really love it. It's weightless and it's full coverage and also it literally just matches my skin as soon as I put it on. It's no work. I've never experienced a foundation like this. Color Beauty only comes in two colors, light and medium. If you have fair skin or you burn easily, go with the light. If you have darker skin, go with the medium. Plus, with an SPF of 50, they're getting the highest level of sun protection in a lightweight formula. And best of all is Color Beauty's exclusive special. Order this Memorial Day and get 40% off. That means you'll get the color adjusting foundation, the skin smoothing primer, and the fan favorite lash enhancer for thicker, longer looking lashes at 40% off. Plus, get free shipping. Visit color40.com or call the number on your screen. Joe Biden opened America's borders, increasing the flow of deadly drugs into our communities. Last year, over 105,000 people died of drug overdoses in America. Biden's putting our children and families at risk. Ron Johnson is warning everyone that drug traffickers are adding fentanyl to counterfeit pills, and it only takes one pill to kill. Please tell your children and support law enforcement. I'm Ron Johnson, and I approve this message. Your John Deere is here. Get yours during our Green Tag sales event. Right now, get 0% for 84 months on a 1 Series. Get a John Deere now and... Power up with Sloan's. Run with a 1 Family Series. Test drive one at Sloan's. Welcome back. The U.S. labor market continues to grow. U.S. Employer, employers added 390,000 jobs in May. That's according to the latest job reports released today. Still, despite the growth, prices are increasing and your paycheck may not be keeping up. Gloria Pasmino breaks down the numbers in this story. The job market is growing steady. That's a sign of a healthy economy with steady growth, rising wages for working families, Everyday cost easing up. U.S. employers added 390,000 jobs in May. That's according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics monthly jobs report released Friday. But despite the growth, inflation remains a top concern. And there's no denying that high prices, particularly around gasoline and food, are a real problem for people. But there's every reason for the American people to feel confident that we'll meet these challenges. The unemployment rate stayed at 3.6%. That's slightly higher than the 50-year low recorded in February 2020, just before the start of the pandemic. Leisure and hospitality saw some of the biggest growth, adding 84,000 jobs. The average hourly wage, $31.95, is up 5.2% compared to last year. But despite the gains, Americans are still feeling the pinch. We're living in a once in a lifetime kind of kind of situation here with the pandemic and the war in Ukraine and other challenges. While your paycheck may be increasing, it's likely not keeping up with inflation and fears of a recession are looming. That hurricane is right out there down the road coming our way. In New York, I'm Gloria Pasmino reporting. And we'll be right back. Who do you see when you look in the mirror? Do crow's feet, wrinkles, and under eye bags make you look 10 years older than you feel? Let's face it, aging isn't fun. We all want to look our best, so we feel our best. But injections and procedures can be expensive and painful. There's a temporary, better way to love your reflection. And that better way is Plexiderm. Oh my gosh. <laughs> wow. Who am I? <laughs> That absolutely blows me away. I feel better, and when you feel better, you shine. And when you shine, the whole world loves you, and that's a great feeling. Hi, my name is Robin, and this is what Plexiderm does for me. I shine. So I feel so much younger when I use the Plexiderm. I feel like I look half my age. 
Uh, and I'm not exaggerating. I feel great. Wow. That's incredible. What a difference. I think I look great. 10 years younger at least. There's been creams, there's been lotions, um, concealers. Nothing works like this. And in just a few minutes, it's amazing. The crow's feet, developed those about 10 years ago. And these little lines around my, my mouth, where did they come from? And I put this on and bam, they're gone. Just in a couple of minutes, I can't believe it. They're gone. Forget the pain and expense of injections or in-office procedures and try the 10-minute solution that lasts for up to 10 hours. Plexiderm is so easy. Just make sure you have a clean, dry face and apply a small amount because it's so powerful. Wait a few minutes, then your bags and wrinkles will visibly disappear. I can't believe I have no lines in my face. I'm like 20 years young. See the Plexiderm difference for yourself this Memorial Day with our $14.95 starter offer. Just visit PlexidermTrial.com or call the number on your screen. The challenges we face today feel monumental. Inflation, gas prices, and now an unthinkable threat to a woman's right to choose. I'm Alex Lazary, and I have a track record of getting things done. That's how you know I'll work for you. By lowering prescription drug prices, putting more money into people's pockets, and protecting every woman's right to choose, no matter what. This is why we must defeat Ron Johnson and start meeting our challenges head on. That's why I approve this message. What's at the top of your home improvement list? Did you say better insulation? Because better insulation makes everything you do in your home better even just walking in the front door on a hot day. So get ready for summer now with USA Premium Foam. It keeps the hot air out, the cool air in, and your electric bills lower. And right now, when we foam your walls, we'll insulate your attic for free. USA Insulation. As we look at Doppler track, you can see nothing across Wisconsin. There are some showers out to the west getting ready to move into western Iowa. They'll be here this weekend. Temperatures, though, very comfortable, low to mid-70s. All right, thank you, Gary. Thanks for your help, Mark. You're welcome. Hope to see you back here at 6.